Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to start writing a little bit of Go code and you're going to get a compile it, run it, some, use some of the Go tools and then we're going to talk a little bit also about the structure of um, a Go program. A lot of material in today's video so let's get started. I think it's going to be a long one but I'll do my best to see where I can shorten things. What are we going to be covering today? So, like I said, we're going to look at the structure of a Go program and we're going to see um, why you need a package statement and kind of talk a little bit about the purpose of a package, um, having to put in things in packages. Uh, we talk about the import statement um, and, you know, the entry point to our program, which is the main function. And then, after we do that, we're going to write a simple Go program and then we're going to look at how we can build it and install it and so on and running it. Um, all this is going to make sense when we go through it. So I just want to kind of set out the scope here and then I'll show you the details afterward. So here's a simple Go program. Now, strictly speaking, the very first line there, I have a comment. It is not required um, to make your program compile. But you should get in the practice of thinking that the first thing you should do when you start writing a Go file is to, or in any program language, the first thing you want to do before you start writing code is jot down some comments about the purpose or intention of whatever you're trying to write. That's going to now only help you in trying to keep focus on what you're going to put in the file, but also somebody else or you later on when you forget what's in this file. So while it's not required, I put the comment as the first thing you'd want to put in your Go file. So that's on line one. You can have a multi-line comment, but that's up to you how detailed you want to make your comment. Um, next thing that is very important though, this is crucial, critical, must have, is on line two, and that's a package statement. So you can see here on my line two, I say package, and I give it the name me. This is just the name of the package. However, when you're writing an executable program, um, or something that can be executed in an application, Trust me, but later on, I'm going to clear up this old package main and the, what you're seeing on line six with the main function there. I have some slides to help clear that up. But the important thing here is that the first statement in any one of your Go file, if after a comment line, and again, comments are optional, but after a comment line, the first statement must be a package statement, regardless of what you're going to give your package, what name you're going to give your package, whether you're going to call it package task, package foolala or whatever, the first non-comment statement must be that statement, pa the package statement. So when you write Go code, there are only two possible things that it can result in. Um, so when you compile it, it's going to either compile as an executable program that you can run. So for slash application, it may say sometimes executable application. But there's really, an, there's nothing such as a non-executable application. An application is an application. But nevertheless, it's either going to be something that you can run or it's going to go into packages. What is a package? A package provides a set of reuse, provide reusable code. So that's going to be a set of functions that you want to reuse, types, methods. We haven't talked about types yet, but anything that's reusable code that you want to reuse and share over time or maybe you might not even want to reuse it but basically if you think a really big application you might just want to be able to break it down and say hey Tom you work on this package and you Bob you work on this other package so it's just for modularity you might actually just want to break up your application because it's big and complex and then you're gonna to pull together packages either some that you've written provided by others or provided by the Go language as part of the standard packages come standard packages that come with Go you're going to want to pull this together to make an application. And so the other thing that your Go code can do is create an application. And so for us, our simple program here is an application. It's something that we can compile and run. We don't have to include it into something else, okay? We're not really providing reusable code. And so we're going to see more of this. I just said that though your code can be compiled an application or packages, and packages provide reusable code. So how do you reuse code then once you have a package? Regardless of who write, wrote it. So this is where you have your import statement. And so your Go program must have at least one import statement. And that's because most of the things you're going to be able to do in your application requires you to import some other package. 
and the FMT package is the format package that's provided by the Go language and that allows us to do things like write formatted output to the screen or read formatted input and, and some other things, but things are around formatting of input and output. Um, if you know C, C++, that's like your uh, I.O. type um, library or any language, for example, it's like your I.O. library that allows you to interact with, you know, standard input and standard output and error also. So let's talk about hypothetical program. And we're just going to say our program is made up of some statements and functions. Those blocks there are functions. And so where, if I give present this to the operating system and say run it for me, where should it start executing a program? Where, what is just the first line? Where's the entry point into my program? Well, if it's a script and language, that's generally very easy. It's just the first executable statement, usually starting with the first line. Or if you put the fun functions above, then it's the first statement that come after any of the functions, all right? All right? But for compiled languages, you need to have some agreed upon entry point. And so we might say, oh, our entry point is that black box. And of course, we have to give it a name. We're not going to say, oh, the entry point is the third function or the second function, but it's rather something with a, a name. And so that is the case with Go. Uh, the entry point for your application, remember, packages contain reusable code, so they don't need to have a specific entry point because you're just going to use them. Think of it like a bucket that contains stuff that you want to reuse. You're just going to reach in and grab what you want. But... For your executable code for your application, you need to have um, a starting point or entry point. And that's going to be the main function in the main package. So let's take a um, kind of like a detailed look of what's going on here. Pulling everything together that we've learned so far about packages and import statement and main. Let's say I want to write an application, it's my awesomely complex application. And I decided that I'm going to break it up into three packages. Now, because it's an application that I intend to compile and run, I must have a package called main. And that's my package there on the right. Now, I can have any other number of packages that I want. But let's say I have two other packages, one called task and another one called package A. And it doesn't matter what's in package A or even in package task. But that's why I call them. But notice that in order for the operating system and go to know where to start executing my application, not only do I need that package main, but I also need a function in there called main also. And so hopefully this kind of makes sense and tie together everything that we've learned so far. And for my packages, even though those are going to be Go code that define those packages, um, when I go to use it in the main package, in my main package, I would say import like package A, import package task. I'm not going to digress too far by actually trying to show that. But it's the same thing we've done in our application. We've said import package FMT. Okay, so now we have some idea of what our code should look like. And we have a very simple program so far. But how do we run it or compile it or build it or whatever it is that we need to do in order to be able to run it, um, to execute it, or give it to our friend so they can run it on our computer because we're excited about our, you know, being able to write Go application. And since we're going to be able to do things much faster and easier, we're just cranking out applications like crazy. Not only for our friends, but not only for ourselves, but for our friends too. So if you just type the Go command at the command line, it's going to spit out a number of sub commands. And there are even a few other commands that come with Go toolchain when you install it that, you know, um, are available that the Go command itself is not going to show you. So how do some of these play together? Now, we're just going to play with a few of them. But remember, like I said, there are a number of them, and we can't go through all of them today. But over time, we're going to use, um, get to know them and use them. The first and most interesting one for us is after you've written some code, and you can see I've listed my directory, and it's just main, um, um, that go. And then I've cut it, so you can see what it is. And it's very simple, hello world program. And now I can just type go space run, invoking the run subcommand of the go command and then tell it which file I want to run. And in this case, I say main.go, and it just executes and prints out thing. In that respect, it looks like if it's an interpreter, uh, like if you're using an interpreted language, for those who know about scripting language or interpreted language. But um, go actually compile this, put it somewhere in a temp directory, and actually run it from there, even though you don't see that. And the end result, if you look in the directory, you would see there's no file that's left around. And that's what makes it look like if it's a scripting language, but actually compile it and run it. And see so if there was anything there that wouldn't work, like was syntactically wrong, Go would actually tell you at the point when you try to do Go run. 
second you run, you type go run, it actually compiled it, created an executable, and ran it from your temp directory. But if I wanted to create an executable where I can just run it over and over or send it to my friends, now I can actually type go build space main that go. So I, instead of using the run subcommand, I use the build command, and you can see that the result now is it doesn't actually run the program right there and then, but it actually just compiled it and build it and give me this main. Um, executable and now I can invoke that as many times as I like or send it or whatever and so it's gonna run but now when I've done this I build it specifically for my platform so what that means is that I can only give this to people who are also running on the same platform as I am in this case I'm using Mac so it built it for Mac but I can easily build it for Windows by typing in the green box you see me type G O O S equal which is Go OS equal Windows and then I put the Go Build command after and it actually created a main.exe for me. And in the yellow box I build for Linux, but because it would want to try and build the Linux one as also main and override my Mac one, I also specify the minus O option to say call this output, the executable output, um, you know, main that Linux. And you could see when I use the file command to look at these three executables, it's telling me at all there for this very specific platform that I want. And so that proves that I didn't have to install anything else or do anything really funky other than set that variable, environmental variable, go OS equals to the platform I want to build for. Now, we're not gonna get into it because you're probably not gonna need to do it, but if, for example, all the things you're gonna be building is for another platform than the one you're coding on, then you could just instead of just pretending you know go os equals whatever um, platform you want os you want you can just ex make that an exported environmental variable and you just don't have to type it so often but again most people are not going to want to do that um, really this is great you know we can type go build and have an executable that we can run over and over but then what's the purpose of the go uh, pad directory that we set up and i said there was a bin sub directory a package directory and a source directory of which we were working onto the source directory so if you type go install instead in the current directory it's going to find all your main program and everything compile them link them together and pull in whatever packages it needs and compile that executable for you but what it's going to do not only um, compile an executable um, it's going to install it in that in, um, bin directory so if you look you're going to see that before I do install, I try to run um, a command called C02S02, it didn't find it. But then I type go install, then I execute the command, it works. And if you look at where the program is stored, it's actually stored in my go path bin directory. Now I didn't have to give it the name because what, at that point when you type go install, it uses the directory name that you're in in order to name the resultant executable. Whereas when you say go build, it just simply uses main as the, the, um, the name of the executable. Being able to type go install and have your program linked and placed in the bin directory which is already or should be on your path so you can reuse it over and over, it's really nice. You don't have to copy it over there. But if you actually want to download and install a package or in this case even an application that someone else has written, you can actually use go get and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go out there, fetch the application from the repository, one of the supported repositories like Git or Mercurial or version, and it's going to compile it and install it. So this was actually what was being done by the tool. If you remember, when we did the setup. If you did the setup, and it says it was missing some tools that it needed for the Go plugin inside of uh, Visual Studio Code, it actually executed the go get command and all those tools Compile, download them, compile them, and install them in the bin directory. Hence why you see in that bin directory you have all those Go FMT and all, all these other applications, Go Lint and so on. And so if you want the hello world that I've written, you can just use that command there to say, go get, you know, um, C06, section 02, which is just the directory, but in that directory contain the main that Go um, code and you could go on GitHub and check for yourself and it's actually going to download it, compile it and install it in your bin directory ready for um, execution and you can see that there I use it and I show that the one that I um, have locally prints out something different than the one that's going to come down from the server 
and so you can tell that the two applications are, are, are different. So besides the screenshot from the slides, I'm actually um, going through the video now of me doing this just so you can actually see this working. Um, you know, the, the, the slides and the images probably doesn't do it as much justice and show you how cool it is. So hopefully this video does. I know it kind of speed through it, but I want to make this video as short as possible. Let's wrap up. We've covered quite a bit. Sorry about the length of the video, but I want to actually give you something that you can actually go out and start coding and doing things with. So yeah, one of the other cool commands that's available is go doc, one word, or you can do the sub command go doc. Now the thing about this is you can type the package name to these two commands, either go space doc using doc sub command or go doc the one command, and it will give you the documentation on that um, package, even for your own packages. Now the both commands pretty much show you the same thing, but they differ slightly. Go doc, the one word, came first and then they start um, refactoring it and make it um, somewhat better. But anyway, um, I show you some slides here of the differences between the two. And at first it appears to print out the same information, but when you get towards the end, the go doc, one word, command does not, um, it expands like what uh, the type and function um, descriptions are. Whereas go space sub doc, it does not do that. So you can still get that information though by just simply typing go space doc space package name that um, symbol, whatever function or whatever, and it's going to get that information for you. So in this example, when I type FMT for both of them, they pretty much listed all the same information, but at the end, the last entry was the stringer interface. And go doc, the one word command, um, expanded that to show me what a description of the stringer interface. Whereas um, go space doc didn't. But I can still get that information by typing go space doc FMT that stringer. I know it's a little bit weird. The important thing here is that documentation is right at your fingertips. That's the really important thing. No matter which one you decide to use, really the takeaway and what you should really remember is that documentation is right at your fingertip at a command line. Of course, you know, you might always have the web browser or something, but sometimes it comes in real handy to be able to just type a command and see the documentation for some function or for a package. Now, Hopefully, this has been enlightening. If it hasn't been enlightening, at least interesting. And if it hasn't been interesting, at least new. If it hasn't been new, at least you went, huh? So, hopefully you enjoyed it in some way or the other. And I was able to teach you something. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do spread the word. Come back. Join me again. Comment um, on things that I can improve or if you have questions. Take care. See you in the next video.